The next part of our inspection is to check the oil clearance uh, between the wrist pin and the bushing in the small end of the connecting rod and the pin bosses in the piston itself. So in order to accomplish this, obviously we have to disassemble the piston. Now I've already done it. Um, and the reason I've done it off camera is because picking out these little spring clips, uh, in a lot of cases, these guys like to go flying on me and I didn't want you to watch me chase them all over the shop as much fun as that would be. When you're doing this, taking them apart and putting them back together, one really important thing to note is the orientation of the snap rings. So you're going to put these guys into these little grooves inside the bosses and they need to snap in. It's critical that the gap on the snap ring faces either straight down or straight up. Now, it doesn't look like that would be a big deal with this sitting static on the bench. However, remember that at high RPM, this thing is moving between bottom dead center and top dead center at five, six, maybe even 7,000 RPM or higher with, with a race engine. And the problem is inertia. Even though that snap ring isn't very substantial, at 7,000 RPM, the top or bottom of this thing will actually, well, in essence, become heavy enough to collapse itself. So if you leave this with the gap sideways and the top collapses or the bottom collapses moving up and down in the cylinder, what's going to happen is eventually you're going to hit it right and this guy is going to pop out. Remember, there's nothing retaining a full floating wrist pin in the piston and the connecting rod other than those snap rings. So if one of them leaves, that pin is going to walk out and contact the block and nothing good is going to happen. So upon removal and installation, we need to make sure that the orientation is correct for those snap rings. Once we've got it disassembled, we're going to find our clearances by measuring the diameter of the wrist pin and again measuring the inside diameter of the bores and we're going to compare the two. We're just going to do it with math. So to measure the wrist pin, I'm going to use an outside micrometer. Again, I've already calibrated it. And we want to measure this in a variety of places. Similar to crankshaft measurements, we want to measure at the bottom, middle, and top. Then I'm going to turn my micrometer 90 degrees and measure again at the bottom, middle, and top. I'm going to write down all my measurements and then I'm going to look for the smallest one. We think about what's going to happen when the components wear. If any wear happens, the pin in the middle is going to get smaller and the bores are going to get larger. So when I'm looking at my pin measurements, I want to use for my oil clearances the smallest number that I come up with. Once I have that, I'm going to take my connecting rod and I want to measure the inside of my bore. Now in order to do that, I can either use an inside micrometer or a telescoping gauge. Uh, if you've never used a telescoping gauge before, that's what this is here. It's got a knurled thumb wheel on the end and it's got this little T-handle on it. And when you turn, it snaps out or telescopes out. When you turn it clockwise, you lock it. So the idea is I reset this down to nothing place it inside the bore, turn the handle counterclockwise, and you, you may have heard that snap there, turn it clockwise to lock it, pull it out, and then I can use an outside mic to measure it. Now, this is an indicator. This on its own cannot provide measurements. You definitely need an outside micrometer or something else uh, to measure it. The problem with the telescoping gauge is in order for this to be anywhere near accurate, you need to make sure that you're perpendicular with whatever you're measuring. So in this case, what I'm doing is I'm putting my gauge right down into the bottom of the bore and resting it on the table. Admittedly, I have a rubber mat here to cut down on glare. This is not the best way to do it. Um, ideally, what I would do is on a flat steel surface or, or a granite block in a machine shop or something like that so that we kept, kept it dead perpendicular, but we're just kind of, for the sake of what we're doing here, this is going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure it 90 degrees, measure it in line with the center line of the rod, and I'm going to look for the largest measurement there. I'm going to repeat that with each side of my piston pin bosses, and again, you're going to need some sort of provision to make sure that you're 90 degrees. Um, what I will do sometimes is find a socket that fits in there, 
and then I can use the socket as a bottom stop. So I can lay this down on top of the socket, open it up, and do my measurements that way. Our spec for oil clearance on our rod is very, very tight. Right? We're going from 2 10 thou to 1 thou, so we don't have a lot of room to move. One last thing that I just want to point out here, and I know in my classes we've talked about this with precision measurement, but with regards to fitment here, when we're talking about oil clearances that are this small, watch what happens if I just hold this in my hand. Just for a couple of seconds is all it's going to take. When you're doing precision measurement, this goes for what you're measuring and the tools that you're using to measure them, Try to handle them with your bare hands as, as well as small a time as you possibly can. Because even the heat from your hands getting into the metal will cause them to expand to the point where they won't go together anymore. Well, they're popped in there. So it does become very, very critical to be careful when you're doing precision measurement.